Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. In this video, we describe how to calibrate nips. Nips are harder than calibrating dancers, which are harder than calibrating load cells. By harder, I mean more complicated, and thus requiring you to know more and do more. Yet you must, else you risk your product, your customer, and, as we will see, also possibly the safety of your operators. So, who needs to know this? Builders, buyers, and owners of any web machine with a nip, such as winders. Calibrating nips is more like calibrating dancers than calibrating load cells. The reason is that in addition to the complications of geometry and trigonometry and statics, which all engineers should know, we have friction coming from cylinders, slides, and other parts. Nip friction is not small, even on the best designed systems. In some extreme cases, friction defines nip loading more than does cylinder loading or assembly weight. This can happen when friction loads are larger than control loads. However, we have additional complication with nips that we do not have with dancers. That is, defining zero in web handling. By zero in web handling, I mean what cylinder pressure, for example, puts the least possible force between the roll and roller. So, before we proceed, I ask that you review the previous short clips on calibrating dancers so we do not have to repeat those concepts here. Let us consider the following system that is quite typical of a winder with a lay-on, pack, or rider roller. There are several forces to consider. There is F1, which is the force from a controllable cylinder. There is W1, which is the weight of the lay-on roll assembly. Also associated with the cylinder and the lay-on roller is little F1, which is the friction of the loading system, which we can find using exactly the same methodology described in Web 201 Point one sixteen A. Then we have W2, which is the weight of the building wound roll core and possibly core shaft. Also associated with the winding roll is the friction of the chuck or shaft slideways or pivots. Again, we can use the methodology of Web 201.116A to quite easily find this. Then, we have not one, but two nips on the winding roll product. We have F2, which is between the lay-on roller and the winding roller, and F3, which is between the winding roll and the drum. While your winder may look different than this picture, the principles are exactly the same. The challenge of calibrating is that while gain can be calculated from weights and geometry, friction cannot ever be calculated. Friction can only be measured. Also, we can't calculate zero without knowing friction, which must be measured. Finally, we need to define what we mean by zero. This is more complicated than, say, it is, for example, F1 or it is F2. For all of these reasons, we must check our simple calculations via measurements in the field. However, don't panic! Before we tackle a previous problem, we will start on a much simpler system and build complexity. 
In this clip, we will start by recalling how to zero a load cell. Then, we will proceed to a dancer that adds the complexity of friction. In the next clip, we will do a simple one element nip, then a two element nip with bending, and then a narrow lay on roller. These cases will cover most every nip and every winding machine you will ever run into. This instructional series is a set of self-test exercises. The first slide will give you the setup and a question to answer. Then please pause the tape. Describe in as much detail as you can how you would get the answer and the reasoning why. Note that there could be more than one right answer depending on the details of your winding machine. Finally, you can hit the play button and see how I answered the question on the next slide. So, here is a load cell that could be used just for tension monitoring or perhaps it might tell a motor what to do. In any case, our calibration check is to make sure that zero and gain are set properly. We will only do zero here. Gain is checked by hanging weights that I may describe in an upcoming YouTube clip. So, how would you zero this system? Pause the tape and write down your answer. Ready? So this was pretty simple, wasn't it? We take the web off, then we find zero or tear setting on the controller. We dial or set that zero or tear setting until the tension reads zero. Or was it that simple? Actually, there's a subtlety here that will become quite important for more complex upcoming examples. That is, the load cell mechanism and amplifier both have a tiny bit of hysteresis or friction if you like. Thus, we should probably wiggle the load cell roller with our hand to see if the zero stays zero. Perhaps it does, at least within a couple of tenths. That variability is the friction, hysteresis, or uncertainty of the electromechanical load cell system. We seldom have to think about this with load cells because friction on these elements tends to be a fraction of 1% of its rating. Negligible for all practical purposes. Warning! This will not at all be the case for the next examples. Now we move on to a slightly more complicated system, the dancer. It is complicated because it has friction on the pivot and the rod seal and, most importantly, the piston seal. We will calculate and calibrate our tension gain by working on the piston side as I may show in a future Web 201 clip. While your dancer may have different orientations, the principles will be identical. In any case, we want to zero the system. How would you do that? Pause the tape and answer in detail. So, how did you do? Well, step zero, as you are already suspected, is we must set zero with zero web tension. In other words, with web off. Step one is to find the rod pressure required to just raise the dancer. Step two is to find the rod pressure required to just lower the dancer. You may wish to repeat these two steps a couple of times to check for repeatability and use the average result. Finally, step three 
is that zero for this system is the average of the just raise and just lower pressures. I say for this system because zero for other systems will likely be different. Friction resists motion everywhere. However, the motion as the system bounces up and down about a neutral point, such as this dancer, averages out to zero, which is why we use the average of the just raise and the just lower values. Note that we may not use averages for NIP systems as we will describe in the next clip. So, what we did in this example is to show in real tension units just how good or bad your dancer sensor is. The tension quality or repeatability of the entire dancer drive system cannot be any better than the most variable element, in this case, the dancer. When we calibrate the dancer, we are in effect defining a web tension versus cylinder pressure plot. By zeroing the system on the rod side, we brought the line so that zero piston pressure, we get something averaging zero web tension. However, averaging web tension does not mean you will actually get zero web tension or any tension setting at any moment in time. So, how good is our sensor, and thus the best our tension control quality can be? We will assume that the rod area is small or negligible for this example. If not, you must convert pressures to forces and work with forces throughout the analysis. But for now, for simplicity, we'll assume that the force from a given pressure on the rod side is similar enough to the force of the piston side for that same pressure. In that case, the horizontal width of the uncertainty band is the raised lower pressure difference and the height of the uncertainty band is the uncertainty in actual real web tension given a specific and perfectly controlled cylinder pressure. This concept of uncertainty is key to this and the following examples. That is, no matter how perfectly you control cylinder pressure, you cannot know nor can you control tension better than the band shown in orange here. So, which zero is which? Zero in web handling is not zero piston pressure or zero rod pressure or necessarily the zero on the HMI. Zero is also not the raise or the lower rod pressure. What zero in web handling is, is the average of the pressures required to just raise and just lower the dancer with the web off. So here is one of the most common of winder arrangements. A winding roll with a nip roller on it, sometimes called a lay-on roller, pack roller, or rider roller. No matter what you call it, you, as a controller process engineer, are tasked with zeroing the system. Gain will be calculated via cylinder geometries and checked via weighing with a force gauge or scale, as we may describe in an upcoming clip. Best practices for most systems are to work with two sides of a cylinder. Here, we will greatly simplify our life by fixing the rod side during run, and then the control side will be done on the piston side. So, the question is, 
What pressure do we set for the rod side? We will give you one week to do this more complicated but still quite common system and then I will give you my answer. Please describe in detail what you would do to calibrate zero of this system and why you would do it that way. Thank you so very much for watching this module in my plant practical series. Please stay tuned for the next clip where we will describe how to calibrate the most common nips you will find in web machinery. See you then.